Broadcasting from the studios of WKEN, where every day it's the weekend. It's the Ken Calvert Show with your host, Ken Calvert. Hi, everybody. It's Ken Calvert. How you doing? Doing well? Hope so. Welcome to the uh, Ken Calvert Show podcast. Coming to you live, or at least as I record it from my home studio here at WKEM. I have been working, by the way. I want you guys to know this. That I got a box of dats. I got a box of CDs. I got a box of old cassettes. I've been archiving hundreds of interviews that, I, that I've done over the years. And um, luckily, I have a bunch of them. I don't have all of them. Boy, I wish I had them all. You know, I, I go on Twitter each and every morning, and, you know, they have the, the trend line down the left side. Especially on Monday, they have Monday Motivation. I said, Ken, Cal, you got to get motivated. Do something. you got this podcast out there. People are listening. They like you. They really, really like you. So I decided to come up with my own trend line for my podcast. It's called Monday Memories, where I play back some classic interviews from the past 45 years. So, ladies and gentlemen, boy, <laughs> here comes the PA announcer and me. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday Memories. The date, October 22nd, 2018. All right, so I went for the gold right away. You can't blame me for that. October 14th, 2005. Sir Paul McCartney was in town playing the first of two shows at the Palace of Auburn Hills. And I had been given a quick heads up, about an hour, by the way, only about an hour, that Sir Paul may be calling me. So if you know me, man, my blood pressure was probably about, I don't even know, probably 180 over 160 and that's not good I don't think anyway he was promoting the shows at the palace along with chaos and creation in the backyard his 14th solo and studio album and now this is important so I get this note Sir Paul McCartney um, may be joining you uh, via the phone call Sir Paul McCartney was turning 64 on June 18th. Remember, uh, don't ask him any questions at all about when I'm 64, the track on Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. They said, don't do that. Nobody, Nobody's done it. Nobody's asked him. He won't answer it, so don't do it. Now, he'd been in Rolling Stone, People Magazine, Forbes, at all, as we used to say. Well, we were going on and on and on. He was stuck in traffic on uh, here locally in Detroit, I-75. And I had run out, I literally had run out of questions to ask him. So I decided, Calf, you're going to die on this hill. Ask him about turning 64. Now, you're going to have to wait till the end of the podcast to hear it. But here's Sir Paul McCartney, October 14th, 2005. With me, KC, radio station was 94.7 WCSX, and it went like this. Call now, 800-793-1809. Well, we're not going to worry about that right now. She's just... talking to me? No, <laughs> she was Paul McCartney. and uh, sell me a house, man. She was trying to sell you insurance, sir. Oh, well, okay. No, I'll, I'll, I'll have some. Go on. And no, and no salesperson will come to your door. W- right. Welcome to the Motor City. Hey, man, thank you. It's your like, to be here. It's like your ninth trip back, right? Yeah, it's lovely. We always love this place. You know, you, you always always appear to be in such a good mood, and obviously if you're going to pick up the phone and call a radio station and a guy like me, it's still just a lot of fun to be on the road. Yeah, no, we're having a good time, and yeah, I must say the uh, audiences, I, I like American audiences, they seem to like me, uh, so we get on great, you know. And audiences on this tour have been fantastic. Well, let's talk a little bit about the show tonight and tomorrow night. It runs for a full three hours, correct, with one intermission in there? No intermission. No intermission? No, man. What the heck do you do to stay in shape? Oh, you know, sex and drugs. And rock and roll? No. 
No rock and roll. No rock and roll. No, it's no good living, Ken. Yeah. Well, I know you do yeah. that, and you work out, and you eat correctly. I do a little bit of this and that. No, I. Uh, you know what? I'm. I don't know. I'm a kind of enthusiast. I like what I do. I love what I do. In fact, and um, it surprises me as it, as much as it does other people. You know, it's like I just somehow seem to get up there and just uh, enjoy myself and come off sometimes, you know, more sort of uplifted than I went on kind of thing, you know. Well, i, I got to ask you that. I mean, you've done hundreds of thousands of shows, and there, there must be a buzz that you, you folks get on stage that we will never, ever feel. What is that like? Oh, it's pretty special. It really is, uh, isn't it? Yeah, it's very special. I mean, you know, you, um, you, you know, you think back. You're you're some kid who's wondering whether you can ever get into a band or get a record deal or do anything, and then you go through that. You do well, and you write songs, you record them, and eventually you get to take them to people. And um, like on this tour, they wow, you know, they give you. Um, a major thumbs up on it, you know. So it, it's fantastic. It's a reward, really. And I want to remind people, if you're just dialing by, and I sound like I'm shaking a bit, I have to be honest with you. Oh, it's it's not. On, no, man. it's it's not every day you get to talk to Paul McCartney. No. So, I mean, I'm really, my breath is a bit taken away, but I, I want to thank... No, I'm very serious because I've spent a lot of time with Chaos... Uh-oh. Sounds yeah. like, it sounds like you have an escort there, doesn't it? Yeah, we have. It's, uh, this is the way everyone should travel. And uh, chaos and creation in the backyard. Let's talk a little bit about that because yeah. it's really a wonderful work. And and oh, you're... great! Thank you, man. Now I, I want to talk about Nigel, and I want to say his last name correctly. Is it Godrich? Yeah, Godrich. Yeah. And and the way it reads in Rolling Stone, which is such a great, great article, by the way. Yeah. Um, George Martin, Sir George, suggested to Sir Paul. To get yeah. Nigel to produce your record. Yeah, that's fine. You know, I just rang him up. I rang George up, and uh, who's a good friend of mine, you know, after all these years, um, whose judgment I trust. Mm -hmm. And I just said to him, look, you know, see, you won't, you can't produce, or he, he could, I think, but, you know, he's... he's uh, he doesn't produce anymore. So, seeing as you don't produce anymore, George, you know, who would you recommend? He thought about it a couple of days and then got back to me. He said, uh, Nigel Godrich. Um, I'd, it, was, it was kind of on my list of people to look at, you know. All right. And so I met up with Nigel. And he obviously came right to the front of the list. Met up with him. And he was a really cool guy. And um, one, one thing he said impressed me. He said, look, you know, he said, I know what I like and I know what I don't like. Mm. I thought, uh-oh, we're in for trouble. Well, that's that's the part I wanted you to get to, because he wasn't afraid to say, nah, too perky. No, exactly, yeah. yeah. I brought in one of the songs that's on the album called Ride Into Vanity Fair, and um, I had it kind of quite up-tempo, quite staccato, quite kind of perky mm -hmm. little thing. Um, and I thought it was quite cool. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have brought it to yeah, him. I, 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 what I, the I, heck, I wrote it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. you know. And... Um, but he just, he always kept turning his nose up at it every time I mentioned it. <laughs> and eventually he came out with it. He said, I don't really like it, you know. So, um, but I had a feel for it. I just, I just felt something about it. So I eventually sort of sat him down after, you know, a bit of this and that. And I said, look, what don't you like about it? Just tell me, you know. And he said, oh, you know, I, I like the, don't like the second line. Or like the third. And so we rewrote it. Um, I basically just came up with a new melody for the mm -hmm. second and third lines, kept the first line, kept working on the lyrics right up until a few, about probably about a week before the end of the album. Mm -hmm. And finally, um, you know, we thought we had it. We'd, we'd halved the tempo when we first looked at it in L.A., and that helped because uh, it was a, it's a song about rejection of friendship. Yeah. So it didn't really need to be too perky, you know. Well, you so know, we, and also, I'm, excuse me for interrupting, but it almost has a little haunting feel to it in parts. Yeah, I think, you know, once we halved the tempo, mm -hmm. and it kind of took it down, and then we put an arrangement on it. Uh, David Campbell did a, a nice string arrangement on it that um, he and I cooked up together and used a kind of bluesy harp, uh, as in plucked harp, as, yeah, as opposed to, like, mouth organ. Um, and so we got a real nice sort of swampy, bluesy thing going on there. 
and finally it made it onto the album. You know, it was it was one that we thought we needed to get, try and get on the album because it was a, a nice balance to some of the atmospheres. Well, will you also talk to me a little bit about Jenny Wren then? Yeah, man. I guess it would be you paraphrasing what you basically said to Benelli in Rolling Stone, the facts um, sort of go that it, it's it's so similar to Blackbird or, or a Beatles song, you almost had a tendency to walk away from it. Yeah, you know, you can do that, I think. Why would you ever walk away from anything? Well, you know, I don't. it's not so much walk away from it, it's, it's more a question of, like, not go there. Right, okay. Because, you know, let's say I had an idea for a sort of... Um, Little string, not a quartet, but an octet or something. Mm-hmm. Little thing going, chim, 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 chim. Well, you might automatically go, oh, Ellen and Rigby. <laughs> and so you might just think, well, let's not go there, because I've done that. Um, but the opposite happened on Jenny Wren. I just thought, you know, I, I, I was so enjoying playing Blackbird on the tour that I thought, you know, that style is a style I've never revisited. I only did it that once, and I run into people who are learning guitar or, or you know, great guitar players, right. and they say, oh, man, you know, I'm, I'm learning Blackbird, or, or is this it, you know, I often just make one or two little corrections, you say, oh, no, that doesn't go there, it's, but it's a part that people like the accompaniment, people enjoy that, playing it, so I thought, well, you know, why don't I just visit that again and see if I can come up with something else, so I was uh, an afternoon off, and I was... I'd gone taken my uh, car up into a little canyon mm-hmm. in L.A. It was a nice little afternoon, so I was just hanging with my guitar, hanging out the car kind of thing, parked, <laughs> naturally. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just before the road safety people got onto That's me. That's right, yeah. Um, and I started messing around and just sort of thinking, you know, what else could we do with this style? And uh, it, it fell into Jenny Rem. I took it home that evening and... Heather was cooking something, so I sat around the kitchen and kind of finished it, virtually finished it up that, that afternoon. Wow. What so a... it was nice, you know, it was a nice one to do. And I, I say, you can see why I was, you know, thinking, well, maybe you know, it's going to look like I'm copying myself. Right. But as I said in that article, you know, hey, I wrote the first one, so I'm allowed to copy me. Well, you know, and, and did you, you know, it's so funny because the Rolling Stone cover has you sitting there with the Epiphone guitar, which, by the way, has the red wing winged I wheel know, on it. Now, I know. Tell me, yeah. And, 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 and people would call me and say, Ken, Ken, how could you not ask Paul McCartney, by the way? Paul mm-hmm. McCartney speaking with me here. Yeah. How did the decal come about in its placement on your guitar? We were in Detroit At, quite a while ago now. I think it was uh, maybe 70s even. I think it was. Yeah. At Olympia. And, and, uh, yeah, and, you know, somebody showed me that um, little Red Wing sticker. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I said, wow, that's really cool, because, you know, we, our band was Wings. So I just thought, yeah, you know, that's great. And I ended up sticking it on my guitar. And uh, it was funny, really, because they've just done an edition of that guitar. They've just done a, Gibson have just done a signature edition. And they've copied everything, you know, right down to the scratches on on the wood and everything. So it looks exactly like my original. It's a really nice guitar, actually, anyone interested in getting a new one. And uh, the, the, a lot of the profits are going to charity and stuff. So it's a great thing for me to be involved in. But they said, you know, should we copy the, the Red Wing sticker? I said, well, I don't know, man. I don't know how people like in Pittsburgh are going to feel about that. <laughs> That's a very good point. You know, but they, yeah. so they said, well, tell you what, we could kind of, um, we could leave it kind of as part of the pack and you can put it on or, or not. But in the end, it looks like they've just put it on and thought, sod it. Let me let you talk about what you would like to talk about. I suspect the live show tonight, uh, a lot of the same, but a lot of songs that get moved around. But specifically when you're in a market, you'll, you'll play something for that market. What have you, have you got something up your sleeve tonight? Oh, uh, you know, um... You're in really. Motown. You, no, uh, Motown. No, you would think that we would have learned the Motown, wouldn't you? I've got to admit, we haven't, man. So don't come expecting that. Okay. Um, no, you know, I, I, we haven't actually learned up anything sp- uh, specific. We've got um, a sort of set list that is kind of working, you know? Sure. And we vary it occasionally, pull out something, you know, from our... We, we did a show the other night. We did two shows in Toronto, Canada, and uh, 
the second show was a different kind of gig, so we we pulled some different things there. But pretty much for these big arenas, we've got a show that works, you know, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I, I'm sorry, we can't let you up on stage. I got your note <clears throat> asking me if you could get up and do a guest number, but I'm sorry, I can't let you, man. I wanted to do some spoken word. I know. And I, I, know. And I wanted to play the drums, which will be, I'll take as much time as you give me, by the way. Yeah, exactly. I'll talk to I you. Know. I'll, I know you've got to get to a sound check and all that, but uh, talk to me a little bit about the drums, your drum playing. And I have I was asked by a friend to ask you how many Beatles songs you played the drums on. I don't remember. I, I think I played on, I think, was it back in the USSR? I think I might have played on. Um, I, you know what? I really can't remember. It's it's not the kind of thing I, I count. You know, I don't even know how many Beatles songs we did. So uh, I'm not sure. I played a, a bit of lead guitar on on a couple occasionally. Mm -hmm. You know, any, I mean mainly bass. But I played some keyboard, some guitar, and some drums. But uh, I know I played a little bit of keyboard on um, Come Together. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that business. Well, we're doing so, a, to, a to Z with the Beatles, so that'll be coming up shortly. Yeah, yeah. cool. So uh, I played a bit of that. I played. Uh, Taxman solo on George's song, mm -hmm. um, and I think I played back in the USSR drums, but I I can't think of anything else. Well, when you think about this album, Chaos and Creation of the uh, Backyard, on Capitol Records, and still that relationship going strong, you play almost every instrument on this CD, correct? Yeah, I play quite a few of them. Yeah, that was Nigel's call. Yeah, really. now I was told the band was ready to go, and, and Nigel said, let's tour with the band, and, and you play the instruments. Well, that's how it happened. We were, I, I decided that, because I didn't know this guy, I thought, two weeks in the studio, we should just take, see if we, you know, like each other or hate each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I didn't want to get committed too heavily. Uh in case I suddenly just didn't like him, you know, mm -hmm. or he didn't like me. Yeah. Well, it sounds, um, it sounds like you you forged a relationship, though. Yeah, no, it was good in the end, absolutely. But the first week we worked with the band, and we were quite happy. I was really happy with the drum sound. He was getting apes drums sounding great. Um, second week, though, he just said, "Look, you know, I'd like to just try something different here. Are you up for it?" And I said, "Well, like what?" You know, he said, "Well." Maybe he said, you just come in the studio and let's just kind of, you know, talk about this record and things. So when I got in on my own, I said to the band, look, you know, take a few days off. Mm -hmm. And um, then I, I got him in the studio with Nigel. And he said, look, will you try doing some drums on this? And will you try you know, playing a bit of guitar on this to see where it takes us? So I did, because, you know, I'd agreed to work with him. Uh, and I thought, well, I've got to got to let his ideas uh, have free reign kind of thing. I can't just say no, you know. So uh, I did that, and he got kind of excited. He said, oh, look, you know, that's the kind of feel I'm looking for. So it was, it was kind of awkward. I had to say to the guys, look, you know, he wants me to do a lot of the playing. Um, but they were really cool about it. They said, you know what, uh, it's, it's not easy to make a record. Go do it. Uh, you know, when you need us, give us a shout, uh, and we'll play it live. And so that's the joy now, you know. I think the point, where, looking back on it, I think what happened was, well, the only thing I can think really is, you write a song, you write the lyrics, you write the tune, you write the chords, um, and then when you come to work it with a band, mm -hmm. then you think about it, the drummer then writes the drum part, right. or the guitarist then writes the solo. And... I think what Nigel was getting at was he sort of wanted me to have a go at writing, composing the drum part and composing the guitar solo or, you know, keyboards, whatever it was. And so that's kind of worked out quite well because I enjoy doing that anyway. And outside the initial embarrassment of telling the guys, but they took it great. Right. You know, they're, they're cool guys. Um, it's worked out now that we're really all enjoying it and we've got, you know, a set arrangement to play live. So it's worked out okay, actually, you know. Yeah. We're, we're all enjoying playing the stuff. Now, does that make an album, uh, does it take longer to make then as a result, or less time? Uh, With you playing all the instruments. Yeah, you know, it's certainly more work for me, that's Of course sure. it is, but I'm just wondering about the overlapping of the time and the, takes, and the recording, uh, yeah, yeah. 
you know, I think you can you can take as long as you want making an album. You know, I've made albums in a week because you just virtually go in and you kind of virtually do everything live. Or I've taken a lot longer than that by multi-tracking. This album probably took about three, four months actual recording time. But we did it over the period of two years because we were touring in between and... Uh, I was taking holidays and all sure. sorts of things, you know. Is there a song on, on the disc for Heather? Um, yeah, there's a couple. Actually. Can I guess? Well, uh, Can I guess one? Okay, yeah, go on. A promise to you, girl? Yeah. Okay. That's, that's got Heather in mind. And what about uh, This Never Happened Before? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is truly just a wonderful work. The show is getting just incredible grades. Um, is this one of the happiest times of your of your life? I'm not trying to be Barbara Walters now. <laughs> no. But is it? Well, Barbara, let me tell you. <laughs> Stop it now, Paul. Stop it's really, it. It's really great. Right. Hey, bullseye all right. handkerchief. Bullseye no. This is all right. All right. This is, this is where Calvert gets beat up, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, exactly. Paul no, you know, no, you know what? It, it's a good time. It all really right. is a good time. I've been very lucky. I've had a lot of good times. But, you know, similarly, I've had, uh, you know, tragedies of course uh, yeah. in my life, as you know. Right. And, you know, lost a, a lot of good friends. And uh, so, yeah, but this is a good period. This is this is a good period. You know, um, I feel good. I, I just got to tell you that uh, everything in my world is perfect right now because it's just so nice to have you on the line. Uh, Paul McCartney, tell me a little bit about the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the show, yeah. We've, uh, you know, it's quite uh, a varied collection that we do in the show. But it's fun. It, it, it keeps it interesting. It keeps it fresh for us, you know. And um, for anyone who hasn't seen it, there's a couple of little surprises that we've never done in America before, kind of thing. Some that I've never, ever sung before till this tour. Well, Paul McCartney's my guest on the live line, and I know you're going to go to work. We have a sound check coming up. Yeah. Given all of that, when you finally recreate and holiday, what do you do to just completely get away from it? Oh, you know, just uh, things everyone else does. Like? Uh, swim, lie on the beach. I've uh, got a little sailboat that I love, a little sunfish. You know, they're, they're real basic little things. Um, love sailing, love riding my horse if I'm at home. Take the old horse out into the forest and try and try and find a wild boar. Mm -hmm. And, of so course, we, you're we, making that part up now to see if I was listening. <laughs> no, I did that. Um, really? I did that this year. There's a, where I live in uh, in England, there's uh, some wild boar in the woods, you know, which is like, it was, it's basically uh, because, uh, I don't know, they escaped from some wild boar farm. So they've been rebreeding like that. So it's like, but where I am, there's this one that I occasionally might see if I'm lucky. So here we go. This is the nature part of the program. But I ran Beautiful. into him this year. I'll tell you what, freak my horse out. They don't like wild boar. <laughs> I bet not. I wouldn't either. No, exactly. But he's cool. It's so great. It's a privilege to see him, you know. All right, one final question for you. Yeah. I know you've been asked a million times. Rolling Stone ended with it, too. You'll yeah. be you'll be 64. How do you avoid... Uh, I mean, what are you going to do? Well, what are you going to do I, when, when you I turn actually, 64? I'm actually complaining to the Office of Registrars. I think there's been a mistake. <laughs> I think there has been a mistake because I, I can't be that. Well. It's, it's wrong, man. But um, what am I going to do? Yep. You know what? I'm probably just going to party. Well. I'm probably just going to have a good time. And, uh, you know, it might, I say at the end of that article, I, I say what, what happened. My kids said to me, Dad, you know, you had better not be on the face of the planet That's next right. year. You better get out of here, you know. Uh, but I said, yeah, you know, either that or I'll be right in the middle of it all. So I don't know yet. I haven't made any plans, but it is kind of strange, you know, to have written a song like that. I talk about boxing yourself in. Yeah. Well, you know. listen, I, I want to thank you. I will let you go. Hey, sir. okay, Ken, I'll tell you one little thing. Just no, we please, go. you can tell me anything you want. I'm not, no. I, listen, I'll just keep going and going and I going. Know, I know, I know, I know. But I haven't reached the gig yet, so I'm all right. I've oh, perfect. My, okay, then we'll I'm, keep going. I'm checking my, checking my... Uh, Let's talk about the album cover real quickly. Did Mike take that shot, your brother? Mike, my brother, took that, yeah. In 1960, many years in ago. 62, I believe, right? Must have been somewhere around then, yeah. Was that your so, yard? 
that you're, yeah. you're hanging out in? Yeah, that was our backyard. Yeah, I asked him recently where it was. It was our backyard. Let me tell you about the 64 thing. Yeah, I go ahead. Some late, I met some woman on holiday, and she said, uh, she said, I hope you don't mind. She said, you know, I'm a pianist in an old folks' home. She said, and I, I play one of your songs. I said, I don't mind. You know what you mean? You're free to play anything you like. She said, well, you know, she said, uh, the only thing is, she's like, I have to change the lyrics a bit. She said, because it's when I'm 64, she said, but it, it's an old folks' home. I have to sing when I'm 84. So they, <laughs> they think 64 is real young. <laughs> I say, you know what? I might have to do the same myself. Well, will you still mm. need me? Will you still need me? When I'm 84. Well, if it's. Go ahead and try and sing it real quick for me. Go and sing it. No yeah. way, man. Come on. No way. Come on. Get, get out of here. You sing it. No. No, I can't Mark sing. Can. All Why right. not? All right, Paul, listen. Um, I have a marvelous two shows in Detroit. Okay, man, listen. Uh, I'm going to play Jenny Wren for the folks, too, right now. Good, okay. nice one. And, we're and I want to just say before I go, yeah. hey, you folks, you good people of Detroit, um, I want to know what Detroit means. Sounds like French, Detroit. Well, it is French. And um, what's it mean? Um, I'm going to, um, unfortunately, we're out of uh, time. Uh, 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 you know, can no, you, I don't know the history of that. I, no, exactly. I, I'm embarrassed. I'm, I feel horrible French. now. That's right. Well, I'm I'm sorry, Ken. I well, I know you. I know you're an that. avid. No, I know you're an avid reader. So you know what I'm doing tonight. Um, well, I'm yeah. going to go online right now. I'll have Check the genesis of it for you shortly, sir. Check it up. Give, tell the good folks before you end your show. But listen, I just want to send all the best to you, your colleagues, and all the listeners, and send lots of love and a big shout from me and uh, to you folks. Uh, some of you anyway at the concert tonight. We're going to have a ball. You can subscribe to the Ken Calvert Show podcast on Apple iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, or iHeartRadio. It's also available by going directly to www.thekencalvertshow.com. You can reach Ken at kencalvertpodcast at gmail.com. The preceding program is the property of Ken Calvert and may not be rebroadcast without the written permission of Ken Calvert.